welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Thank you for making this broadcast a part of your day. And thank you also for wanting to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I hope that this broadcast is a part of that growth process for you. Now, right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Romans chapter 2. Romans 2, if you can, get out your own copy of God's Word and join me there. Romans 2, in a moment, I'll be reading verses 5 and 6. I'll also be highlighting one of our gospel tracks here in a moment. And by the way, we are now into our 81st year of gospel tract ministry. This radio program, Bible Tract Echoes, is the radio arm of a larger ministry that our announcer has talked about already. Bible Tract Incorporated has been producing gospel tracts in different languages and giving them away free of charge all over the world, as I said, for 81 years. I want to give you a sample packet of our gospel tracts. I'm going to highlight one of them here in just a moment. But right now, let me kind of set the table for our Bible study this way. When I was in sixth or seventh grade in school, we had two guinea pigs. My sister and brother and I were all assigned the task of caring for them, even though my brother and I, frankly, didn't care much for the guinea pigs. Anyway, those two furry creatures had a great life. They ate well and had a clean cage. Nevertheless, they were always trying to escape. When the weather would turn nice, we would take them outside and place them in a wooden box, but the box had no bottom to it. That way, the two critters could eat all the grass they wanted and get some sunshine, but they always tried to dig an escape hole at the bottom of the box, and we always stopped them and caught them. That is, until the last time. Those two guinea pigs escaped, and we never found them ever again. How, how foolish these little creatures were. They were well cared for, but their foolish, stubborn desire to get out finally caught them to where they wanted to be. They were now on their own, living their life their way, as the old song goes. That night, my dad's family devotions was the guinea pig story. Our verses from Romans today could have been my dad's text for the family devotions. I don't think that they were, but they could have been. <laughs> Get your Bible. I'll show you why. I mentioned those gospel tracts here a moment ago. Now, a gospel tract, my friend, is simply an evangelism tool. It's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. There are 40 different gospel tracts in that sample packet I want to send to you. One of them is this one, What God Wants Everyone to Know. That's the title, What God Wants Everyone to Know. This track was designed with the idea that the reader may have absolutely no background in going to church and reading a Bible. They may never have gone to vacation Bible school or anything. they starting at square zero when it comes to Bible information. So what does God want that person to know? Some questions are asked here like, who is God? Where did we come from? Where did Adam and Eve live? Who is the devil? What is sin? Why do people die? What happens when people die? Who is Jesus? How can we go to heaven when we die? These are questions that are asked and answered in this gospel track. It's a great tool, by the way, to put into your visitor packet at your church. It's a good, solid gospel tool. It leads somebody to how to know Christ as Savior. Friend, 
you need to use gospel tracks. Let me send you a free sample packet. At the end of the program, my announcer will make known three ways by which you can give to us your name and mailing address. Do that, and we'll send that free sample packet to you. If you cannot wait to the end of the program, just go to our website, and you can order the sample packet there. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible is open to Romans chapter 2, I begin reading at verse 5, a section dealing with the morally upright person, but one that is a sinner. Verse 5 says, But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself, wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. Notice that verse 5 begins with the little English word B-U-T, but we're going to come back and highlight that. That is a key word here in the passage. The opening 16 verses of chapter 2 is a section where the Spirit of God is confronting the morally upright person with this fact. The morally upright person is a sinner. They have committed sins, the sins listed back in chapter 1, and therefore they are a sinner against God and under God's wrath. Oh, they may not have done these things outwardly. They may have only done them in their thinking, but God judges the thoughts and the motives of our heart. The morally good person stands condemned in God's eyes and needs the gospel. That's the point here. In the opening four verses that we looked at on Monday, those verses, my outline word was given this, inexcusable. That was my outline word, inexcusable. It's found in verse 1. Now, verses 5 through 11, my second part of the outline, my key word is this, impenitent. Impenitent, again, found in verse 5. I really like it when my outline words are actually found right there in the passage. As I said a moment ago, verse 5 begins with a word, B-U-T. It's a contrasting conjunction. You know what that is? A contrasting conjunction. It's a word that connects. The word but connects verses 4 and 5, but it does so by showing a difference, a contrast. In verse 4, we see there the mercy and the patience of God at work. The goal of God is to bring repentance in the life of the sinner. But in verse 5, we see the stiff-necked heart of the moral person, the moral man, who is unwilling to repent or even see that they need to repent. Now, remember those guinea pigs? Those guinea pigs took all the food we gave them. They took all the care we offered them. But what did they do? They rebelled. They went their own way. I'll guarantee you that they never ate as well after they ran away as they did before they ran away. I'll guarantee you that. Their stiff-necked attitude cost them a great life. But notice the facts given here in verse 5 about the heart of the morally upright person. And that is morally upright in their own eyes. The person who thinks they don't need Jesus to save them from their sin, their goodness will be enough to cover over and gloss over their sin and God will let them into heaven. What things do we learn about them? Well, notice here, first of all, all from verse 5, number one, they have a willful heart a willful heart. Verse 5 here describes their heart as hard and impenitent. That word hardness there in verse 5 means that they are stiff. Their spiritual necks won't turn to see their need to repent, their need of salvation because they are a great sinner. That's number one, their willful heart. Secondly, notice their work. Verse 5 says they treasure up to themselves wrath. These morally upright people, at least, again, that's how they view themselves, these upstanding people are doing something. Verse 5 says they are doing something to themselves. They are making the amount of wrath that they're going to be facing one day before God, they're making that amount to grow and become worse. Their judgment will be worse. They're treasuring this up and they're doing it to themselves. Thirdly, after we see their willfulness and we see how their work of treasuring up, thirdly, what is in their treasure box? Verse 5 says they are gaining more and more wrath. 
They think they are treasuring up good works which they can offer to God one day, but God says their treasure chest is holding more and more judgment from God, not good works, not things that will merit their entrance into heaven. They are treasuring up wrath before God. That brings me to my fourth idea, still found in verse 5. When? When will God open their treasure chest and cause them to experience this wrath? Well, let me come back here and read again the end of verse 5. It says, against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Now, what is all that saying there? Well, it's saying these things. One, there is a day. There is a time of judgment that is coming. I believe this refers to the great white throne judgment spoken of in Revelation chapter 20, beginning at verse 11. This day of judgment is part of God's prophetic calendar. Books which have been are the records of the works of non-believers. These books are going to be open. Revelation 20 says they're going to be read. And also there's a book called the Book of Life. It will be opened. And anyone whose name is not written in this Book of Life will be cast into the lake of fire. And there they will remain forever and ever and ever and ever. That's what the Bible says. Now, we're asking the question here, when? When will this treasure chest of wrath come up? It's going to happen in a day. Number two, it's in a day of when God dispenses his wrath on stiff-necked people. Why do people go to hell? Because they are sinners already. And when God shows them mercy and prolongs his mercy to them, they in their stiff neckedness will not repent of sin and receive Christ. Third thing is, this is a day of revelation, verse 5 says. What's being revealed here? Well, in that day, we could find out more about this in verse 16, still here in Romans chapter 2. Romans 2, 16 tells us this. I'm reading now. In the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. What, it's a day of revelation of the secrets going on in your heart. Friend, if you do not know Christ as Savior, you've got some heart secrets that nobody knows, but God does. They will be revealed. You'll be judged on the secrets of your hearts and the works that you've done. One more thing we learn here about when this will happen. It's a day of judgment will be a day of righteous wrath by God. Righteous wrath by God. No one that day will be debating God on his decision about their punishment. Nobody will. The wrath of God will be poured out on morally smug people, but they're unrepentant people. The people will be think that they're right in their own eyes. It'll be a harsh wrath from God. It'll be a righteous wrath. It'll be exactly the right judgment that they deserve. Verse 6 And the two that I read here by saying this, God will render to every man according to his deeds. Our deeds are spelled out in the scripture to uh, include what we overtly do, what we overtly say, the things we do privately, the things that we think and say privately, what we think about and what we do, what we don't act upon, even though we think about it, all that, the motives of our heart will be judged by Almighty God. Oh, beloved, this judgment day will be a complete judgment day. The only escape is Jesus Christ as your Savior. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.